What's up and welcome to the first herping vlog from Expedition Malaysia, a 10 night herping trip through the country's best wildlife destinations with Explore Herpetology. I didn't have time to film any introduction, so let's get right into the action of the first night. All right, so before we get into the forest, we're having a look at this uh, amazing red-headed crate that Plato actually just caught last night while herping out by himself. We thought it was too good of an opportunity to miss, uh, especially in the, in the chance that you don't see one of these, which is always a possibility when you're herping, you know, it is a rare snake. Uh, it's just a really, really beautiful individual with some remarkable purplish coloration on the body and a cool little marker pen uh, scroll on the face. Which I quite like and this one's doing a lot of cool like cobra mimicry you see that lifting its head spreading its very very narrow hood just by expanding the ribs on its neck it's not small either like it's not a what I consider a big red-headed crate but uh it's a good like 1.3 meters and uh in super good condition looks like it may have just come out of shed as well it's the second one I've got eyes on with in the this year and uh, right after seeing a bunch of baloensis we just got this out right by the car and it's just absolutely stunning. Look at it here. Such a cool snake. All right, here we go. Hitting the forest for the first time on Expedition Malaysia. And we got Plato at the front, gnoming it up. <laughs> Bushwhacking, gnome style. And uh, let's see what shows up, man. Let's go. All right, first snake of the walk is this beautiful little mock viper. Actually the first time I've ever seen one around KL. Stevens reassured me in the past that they do occur here. But actually my first time seeing one. Oh no, here we go. I got a... There we go, there's a better view of this. Cute little uh, pale morph mock viper. They come in a couple different morphs. Uh, they can be large and very dark color, but this one's an adult and very pale in color. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we picked up one of these in the highlands later in the trip, because that's where they're definitely much more abundant here in Malaysia. But down here in the lowlands, uh, probably restricted more to like disturbed edgy areas like we're walking in right now. And a uh, nice to pick up a snake within the first few minutes of walking because uh, snakes are always hard to come by in these tropical forests, even on these edge areas. But yeah, beautiful little mock viper. So here we got our first long nosed horn frog chilling in, in the bushes here. Super I pale. I only now see it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, so pale in coloration. They actually do change color to suit their environment. And you can see there's a few pale lizards here lizards a few pale leaves here which uh, has definitely gone to this very very pale beige coloration beautiful a few feet away from the horn frog is this nice adult male belli not as big as they can get but this male has developed a really nice crest of horns here although it has some shed stuck on the top ones which is visible there but really cool lizard here right next to the frog so right around the corner from the from the frog and lizard steven spotted this cordo the first one that me and plato have seen since we've come to malaysia right yep yeah, a really nice adult. The Thai ones are super vibrant. Uh, this one's quite nice for a Malaysian one. As you get close to the Borneo, they get slightly more drab. But this one looks beautiful here. Uh, it bit me immediately. You can see some damage when I caught it. But ever since then, it's just become really calm, which is super nice. It's a really beautiful bronze back. The most robust bronze back with uh, some terrestrial activity. Loves to eat skinks, hence why it has such large teeth. Which make it one of the more formidable non-venomous snakes to be bitten by. That's for sure. Yeah. Someone, want, someone wanted to see a snake game. Careful, there's a night hornet there. Yeah. Here we just got a beautiful Wallace's flying frog, all in the same area, really. We haven't moved far at all. Um, these ponds here were pretty consistent for finding them around. This guy was just on a branch a little above. Absolutely beautiful here. Not disturbed much, so it's retaining its like bright, bright green coloration. You can see the black webbing. Someone turned on an electric razor? <laughs> it was in my phone, but I don't know. <laughs> Cool, amazing. What a, one of the most showy, fantastic frogs in the region. Check this out. Just by the Wallaces, we got a much less common. Oh, what the hell? A much more hoppy flying frog. This is a Racophorus pardalis, the harlequin flying frog. And from below, it looked kind of dull, but it's beautiful and uh, has found a place on my arm where he wants to crawl up. Oh no. He's gonna be gone soon. Should I get him? Yeah. He thinks you're a branch. Get him, Plato. There you go, look at that. I absolutely love these because, especially because they're so rare in Southern Thailand, like so insanely rare, they're a lot more special for me to see here. I know they're not as rare as they are here in, than in Southern Thailand, but they're certainly not common. <laughs> and uh, he just wants to jump onto everybody. 
Get ready. <laughs> oh. The uh, tree frog party doesn't end. It's got a really nice dark-eared tree frog, Polypodates caletti here. Nice pale coloration with super cool contrasty bands. These get absolutely giant. Jordan, you'll remember these. These are those huge ones we were seeing in the forest while looking for some Martranus. Yeah, I remember that. This is freaking awesome, guys. So in the background, huge Wallaces. In the foreground, first time ever showing on the channel, Norhayati's flying frog. Let's get it down. Here you go. You can see this beautiful Norhayati's flying frog. Look at that. First time ever showing on the channel. These are super rare in Thailand, really rare. But at this spot, they're actually not particularly uncommon. Like I actually saw one, I think one of the previous, like second most recent time I came here. Uh, this one's not big at all. This is a relatively small one. They can be as big as a Negro Palmatis. But you can see that like insane, like blue and black webbing they have. Such a cool tree frog piece. I absolutely love them. Like the way they got a more like goofy look bit more fat kind of stout like the Australian tree frogs so cool all right here in my hand I'm restraining a dusky wolf snake that uh was not very polite and was biting the crap out of me and even worse jumping up the bank to get it I went into like some just cluster of stinging ants that were just stinging me all over my legs and it was a lot at once so that's why I've got this snake restrained here I don't want to take any more bites while my legs are already just so sore from these wasping ants but uh yeah pretty cool like dolan jungle species not too remarkable in terms of coloration but it's incredibly long and thin a uh, very like cool textured scales it's definitely the most distinctive feature of this snake it is of course a lycodon so you see it's got the enlarged rostral scale and those kind of like stuffed animal eyes quite distinctive but uh yeah species number three herp tonight let's go all right, that looks like it's going to do it for tonight. Nobody else is around because I kind of lagged back to scan some vegetation. Not too much activity, but we did spend a lot of time hanging out with the frogs and so forth, um, which of course means we don't cover much ground. And we, yeah, it was probably worth it since we saw all of the lowlands, like best frogs in one night, pretty much. So that was great. And uh, also seeing the red-headed crate, of course, what a way to start. But uh, yeah. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Not sure what the agenda is exactly going to be. I think we are going to do a daytime walk if the rain allows us to. And then we're going to head out into the mangroves. So catch you in a sec. All right, back to us. We're just killing some time here at the waterfall. If you want to know who this is, you need to subscribe to the Patreon. We did a full episode on the Patreon together where I introduce who this guy is, why he's here and what's going on. Who are you? Who the fuck are you, man? I'm a small, small diminutive man. <laughs> All right, so me and Plato just split up from the rest of the group and we're going to head up this little stream here. They went up the main trail, but this air habitat here just looks brilliant. So we're going to shine around. It feels like there's a threat of rain, but let's see how far we can push this. All right, our first daytime walk of the trip actually turned up a snake. Uh, this is one I was uh, very much hoping to see here. And we went along this stream, which has a lot of these ponds. And I saw a tiny little triangle keelback swim under here. And... Uh, we lost that one, but I was like shining around under and then all of a sudden, oh, hello. <laughs> all of a sudden, like a bigger one came out of absolutely nowhere and disappeared into a hole. Um, but it, the hole fortunately was just made of sand under the water and I just dug around a bit and then he came like flying out. He's got a stomach full of some kind of food. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's kind of hard to be like a frog, um, but it's still quite pretty. If you see with some reds on the side and yeah, the other guys all headed up the trail, whereas, whereas me and Plato, we, we took a little like stream walk. Look at Plato, he's literally steaming. Can you see that? Bro, steaming. What the patterns, Rasta Clartifarianism? But yeah, cool to get a daytime walk on our, a daytime snake on our first daytime walk out here. Let's go. All right, just gonna release this little triangle, see where he goes. There we go. Let's go. We've seen a ton of Dracos, even though I haven't filmed any of them, but just on the way back to the car, I grabbed this little Broncocilla. What did he say the species was? It should be Christatella down here. Um, this one was just climbing up on that tree there. And in my torchlight, it just glows. Uh, this one's got some kind of strange spinal issue. I'm not sure what that's about, but still a pretty lizard. Just a bit on in the rain, we caught this uh, nice little earless agami. You can see that crazy blue mouth there. Really cool feature, but I'm trying to escape before it gets too rainy. Nice reptile uh, diversity out here today. Look at this guy. Nice little orange stripe on the dorsum. Let's go. All right, it started raining, so 
I think that's going to be this daytime walk truncated for now. All right, here we are, second night, jumping straight into it. Tonight we're checking out some mangrove forests here in Selangor. Got a few targets, banded crate, mangrove pit viper, anything else that's active, let's get right to it. All right, here our boy Reed, aka Ras, managed to turn up a nice big adult mangrove pit viper, like a really decent sized one. Some super contrasty patterning as well, not just like a bland uh, grayish dark one like a lot of the ones we see in Thailand. You can see it just here in ambush, right on the edge of the water. Look at that, right on the edge of the estuary. Super cool. We're gonna get him out for a closer look, of course, or her probably, this is almost certainly a she. I love the look of this one. Nice diamond back pattern, looks great. All right, we just brought her up onto the boardwalk and you can see the color a lot better against the contrast of this wood here. Really high contrast and such a defensive snake. You know, these have a reputation for being incredibly bitey, but we never find the Thai ones to do, to do so. But this one definitely living up to that reputation majorly. Like you make any kind of big movement near it and it wants to kill. Look at it going right into the ambush. I'm not getting any closer than this. They won't even take a chance with this one. But yeah, so much nice whites on the side. Really, really cool. Even some tinges of like grayish green on the lateral flanks. That's so freaking cool. What a nice snake. We just finished the boardwalk pass and literally on the board, on the like entrance sign. Look at that. A little male mangrove pit viper coiled up right here at the start. Here we got another super large mangrove pit viper, probably the same size as the first one. Oh, and he's already, she's already out and about. Nice to see some big females out here. You know, you can easily come to these mangroves, just see a couple tiny juveniles. You know, you've probably seen in my previous videos of yesteryear searching for mangrove pits in Southern Thailand. You don't always get lucky with a big female. Um, but tonight, I think this is the third one. Uh, this is the second that I've seen so far. I think the other guy's got another big female, but yeah, really cool. Look at that. When we arrived here, we told all the guys, we were like, uh, you know, no point looking on the ground for mangrove pit vipers. They're never on the ground. And here we've got a huge female that looks like heavily gravid. Wait, what is that protruding from its side? Maybe just like a large meal, a bolus, some kind of food bolus. Or I don't a know. cancerous tumor. Yeah, that's pretty fucking severe. Parasite cyst, maybe. That's, that's about a burst, bro. Anyway. <laughs> Let's crank the battery up. Yeah, mangrove pit viper crawling just across the mud. I don't see that too often, to be honest. On our pursuit for the bufa, uh, Plato spotted this little mangrove pit hanging down here. This is another male, similar to one at the entrance. The search continues. Habitat looks good in this particular 10 square meter area. So I almost trod on this guy here. Looking off the side of the boardwalk for Crace, we've got another male mangrove pit here. They're super beautiful at this locality. Really, really nice. Nice contrasty bands, um, and these males have this kind of nice kind of yellowish orange coloration, and cool eyes too. This one, a uh, decent size. This is definitely an adult male. I don't know where it was the rest of the times. I reckon it was probably like curled up in one of these crevices here, and none of us looked down. But there he is, looking great here on the boardwalk. And this is like mangrove pit viper number eight of the night, I think. All right, no, no boofer in the mangroves. We're gonna hit the road, see what shows up. All right, so we did road cruise a snake and it's probably the fattest sunbeam I've ever seen in my life. Like, where's its head? It's like poking out through here. Look at that. <laughs> so freaking cute, this snake. So nice as well. Like a southern sunbeam, which has so much white between the scales. And it's like, look how thick that is at the mid body. I've never seen something. I'm, I'm wondering if it's just eaten a snake or an eel and it might just be expanded. But wow, look at the iridescence there. That's beautiful. Nice to get another species on the board tonight, especially one which is always so high up on everyone's like target list when they come to Asia. Super kind of like, it's understated, but it is relatively famous in its own way. A very unique snake. Uh, only a couple members of the Xenopeltis genus. This is the only member in this part of Southeast Asia and it's freaking beautiful. Look at that reflection. Insane. He is heavy like, there. why is this sunbeam so massive? <laughs> Look at the freaking mid body size, man. It's like, more than two fingers fit and my fingers are freaking fat as hell look at that so cool man all right so uh just as we got the sunbeam the other guys crew something and they got this nice three meter python which has gone into uh what i can only describe oh. as like a flaccid <laughs> state um not a word i like using in any context really but this time it actually applies and uh 
What turned, what was a kind of a slow night in terms of diversity, just seeing a ton of mangrove pit vipers, turned into getting a couple really cool snakes at the end of the day. And I still don't like the way this guy's like kind of hanging out near my wrist because you really don't want to get bitten on the wrist by one of these. I got snagged by a tooth of a python in Phuket and it caused like a blood clot under the skin and that was pretty messed up. So imagine what one this size could do. That one was like half the size of this, but nice way to end the night here. We're all gonna, we're all gonna head back and maybe get some McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here's a better look at it. This one's actually covered in injuries and Steven says he's seen this exact python here before, which is kind of hard to believe, but he said he recognizes the, some of the injuries on it. Yeah. Um, which is definitely uh, something, you know, like these ones on the head would be caused by when it like grabs some kind of mammal and the mammal is like clawing like crazy. Or perhaps if it gets like mobbed by a bunch of birds in the forest, they can be like pecking at its head and trying to hit its eyes. But its eyes are intact and uh, it's looking pretty healthy. So good quality snake here, nice one. All right, kicking off night three. Me and my group couldn't even get out the car for like a couple seconds before we got our second striped bronze back of the trip. This one's got some really nice oranges on the head and uh, on the tails, you can see there. Typically like dark Malaysian morph on the anterior third, but looking pretty great here. Um, really nice snake just sitting uh, just by the car actually in some plants here. Uh, we've split off and checking out a little stream site near the edge of the road while the other guys are walking some trails inside the forest. Uh, then we're gonna link up later and share our best finds, but I'm getting absolutely swarmed by some kind of flying bugs right now. So take one last look at this beauty and uh, I'm gonna let it go. Well, this is a nice little vine. I thought it was a freaking viper in the tree, like a young male wagglers. Freaking Goniosoma oxycephalum, just chilling out in this bush here. Not far from where we got the striped bronze back, just at the beginning of our walk. Checking out this really cool kind of like open forest here and such an odd position in the tree. Like, what is that? So weird. Look at the way it's hanging out there. I waited for my team to get here and I, I brought it down and you can see like this really cool looking juvenile Goniosoma. Put your head up here. Like really faded coloration for what you typically expect. They're usually like very, very emerald green, but this one's, yeah, just kind of an interest. Definitely not to do with shed either. This is its like natural coloration because you can see the eyes, look in that emerald sort of like golden green colored eyes. And look at that bright blue tongue. One of like the coolest features of the snake. It barely reacted at all to getting uh, taken down from there as well, which is strange. You know, I would have expected it to be biting a bit, being a typical rat snake, but that's a really cool find, like definitely the lowest I've ever found a Gonyosoma sleeping in all my time ever herping in Southeast Asia. Like within like easy hand reach distance, I've never had that before ever. They always require some kind of climbing or long stick to get them down, but that's a super elegant and beautiful snake. How cool is that, man? Our next snake of the night is this Malayan vine snake. This is species number three for us here. Maybe my lens is a bit foggy, so it won't show it too well, but let me see if we, what we can do, yeah. That's a decent look at this guy, is it not? You can see him peering down at me, flicking his tongue, trying to figure out what's going on. Do I mean him harm? I don't mean you harm, but I am actually gonna catch you so I can show you to the others. All right, we just added a uh, species number four for our little walk here, and it's a nice adult blue bronze back. I'm not really showing much blue right now, although it was when I first caught it. Come on, show me some blue. Please, man. Oh, what's it even got itself caught on? Okay. Wave your hand in front of its face. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately this one uh, isn't so keen to show the blue. There's some coming through there, but uh, yeah, it's one of the more plain bronze backs in terms of its general appearance, but it has one of the most striking interstitial skins, especially on the neck when they flare up. Like, look at that. Yeah, now I've got it like looking at my knee. You can see for a second some of the blue there. But yeah, nice one, man. Another species, a third new species that we've added for the trip. No idea what the other guys have, because I don't know if any of us have signal to contact each other, but you know, blue bronze back, we don't see too often at all in the south of Thailand. So I've been pretty happy to see a few of these since I've arrived in Malaysia. That's brilliant. Here's a nice Certidactylus consabrinus, regrown tail, unfortunately, but nice kind of striking bands here. One of the cooler kind of bentoed geckos that hangs around in these forests, although um, I can't let go of his uh, neck right now because he'll chomp me. Really big claws as well. When these get huge, you can really feel their claws and certainly you can feel their bite too. All right, so we just got another snake down the path and I've actually handed off the camera this time to Jordan because there is no way, as you can see, I can film this one-handed. We got a freaking huge keeled rat snake. How cool is that? Like <laughs> one of the best colubrids in the area. And it's even bigger than the one I found with Plato in my Patreon video. And uh, this one, like it's a good like two and a bit meters long. But what's so impressive is how thick it is. Like look at the mid body 
compared to my hand here. It's such a really, really healthy individual. Like I see uh, these every now and again in Thailand. Uh, and this is probably one of the thickest individuals I've seen for its size. Look at it. And I love their tail pattern too. Like take a look at that tail pattern. Really cool. That's by far the best way of distinguishing this species from the other TS and also King Cobras is this very, very, very distinctive tail patterning with a black and web kind of black and, uh, what is this, brown? Yeah, black and brown kind of webbing. But yeah, look at that. What's so cool about these as well is that they don't bite at night. In the daytime, I was joking earlier, they literally try to eat you. Like they lunge at your face and will just try and bite whatever they can actually manage. But at night they act kind of, just kind of confused and are very, very reluctant to bite. But really cool snake here. What a fine, we're killing it tonight. This is species number five and new snake for the night number four. Let's go. Well, here's our target species for the night, but sadly it's just a juvenile male. <laughs> Man, I don't know where the wagglers are. Like this area was so good for wagglers last time we came with Plato. This is a good sign at least. Let's see what else is out. Okay, here's the little male down from the tree. It indeed is a male and not as small as it looks. Uh, once we got it down, you know, this is definitely like a sort of a latter stage sub adult or a young adult male, possibly breeding size at this, this one. And yeah, you can tell it's a male because it's got the spots and the kind of slightly darker green coloration. Whereas the females, they'll have more like uh, the red and white bands on the body and he's looking cool there but we're gonna go keep walking see if we can find anything else before, the, before we're gonna see if we can find anything else before the night's out let's go oh hello didn't expect to see you here just chilling on the edge of the road not the typical place you expect to find this species this will probably be our last find because we gotta drive back and meet the other guys see what they found and whatnot but uh yeah this is a cool little uh land horn frog <laughs> 